Hello, this is Theory Basics. I'm Dr. B.J. Brooks from West Texas A&M University. Today we are looking at compound time, what it is, and how to count it. Simple time signatures are of the type that use a 2, 3, or 4 in the numerator or top number in a time signature. For example, in 2-4 time, the top number 2 shows us that there will be two quarter notes per measure. The numerator or top number will show you how many note durations there are per measure. The bottom number or the denominator will show you the type of note to use to fill the bar. In this example, two four time, there are two quarter notes per measure. The two telling you how many and the bottom four representing the quarter note. Were we to replace the bottom number with a 1, it would represent a whole note, meaning that there will be two whole notes per measure. It follows that we can do the same thing with half notes, having two two time with two half notes per measure, eighth notes with two eighth notes per measure, and so on. For all of the examples so far, the note unit in the measure is divided into two parts. But what would happen if we divided the beat into three parts rather than two? What if we were to choose the dotted note as the beat? As we have seen, the top number shows you how many of the bottom kind of note there are in the bar. In 2-4 time, there are two quarter notes. If we were to expand the duration of the notes by dotting them, we would find two dotted quarter notes may also fill a bar. This time signature shows that two dotted quarter notes will fill a bar of music. We know that because three eighth notes fill in the duration of a dotted quarter note, six eighth notes will fill in the duration of the entire measure. Therefore, we use the time signature six eight to represent two dotted quarter notes per measure. In a compound time such as this, the number of beats is a part of the total number of rhythmic units in a measure. Here there are six rhythmic units, the eighth note, but the number of beats is two. When counting a rhythm in a compound time signature, it is important to first identify the beats. Here is the first beat grouping of the measure, three eighth notes. When counting a rhythm, the first part of a beat grouping is a number. The second to third we will call la, and the third third we will call li. Here's a Scottish folk song that we'll use as an example. Time signature is 6-8 time, meaning the bar is filled with 6-8 notes, and the dotted quarter note gets the beat. Find the beats throughout the measures, and then you can find where the second third of the beat grouping and the third third of the beat grouping lie. With a metronome, you could count this excerpt this way. One lolly, two, lee, one. One lolly, two, lee, one. One lolly two lee one lee one lee two lolly one. In the next musical example, there are six sixteenth notes per measure. Once we apply the beat groupings, we can see that there will be two beats per measure, and then we can fill in the rest of the sixteenth notes in the second and third third of each of the beats. With a metronome, you could count it this way. One li two li one two li one la li two la li one. In this last musical example, there are six eighth notes per measure. The beats are grouped every three eighth notes. Once we establish where the beats are, we can then determine where the second third and the third third of each beat occurs. With a metronome, we would count it this way: li two la li one. Two one two one two li two la li one li two li one li two la li one li two li one. In summary, it's important to know that when beats are consistently divided into three parts, a compound time signature is often used. In compound time signatures, the number of beats, as in simple time signatures, tends to be two, three, and four. A subdivision of the beat is used when calculating a time signature. When you keep these things in mind, music written in a compound time signature is not that much of a mystery.